Well, good morning, everyone. It's a couple of minutes after 11.30, so we will uh, get everything kicked off. Uh, once again, good morning. My name is Sean Huber. I'm one of the Automation Systems Groups Managers here at Rumsey Electric, and today we'll be talking about the power side of our business with a presentation on what to watch when adding buckets to your existing MCC. And I'm sure we'll go back and forth a little bit on some of the things that you got to consider and some of the things you might want to consider going into the future uh, with technology and some of the, the added benefits you can get out of replacing older buckets today. Uh, so with that, I would like to introduce Chip Vanderveer and Eric Zapka. Uh, ultimately, I will let them both introduce themselves in greater detail here in a slide, but I do want to introduce them as Rumsey's MCC team here, um, and they do support our entire geography and work as a team. So if either one of them uh, happens to be out on a call or or immediately on available, feel free to reach out to the other. So with that, Eric and Chip, I'll uh, turn it over to you. Morning, everybody. This is Chip Vanderveer, um, the MCC specialist for, or one of them now, at, for Rockwell Automation Centerline MCCs. I've been in the business way too many years, and I uh, started out my career uh, working for another supply house selling Square D products where uh, I was in charge of Square D sales from everything from crane control through power panels, transformers, the whole deal. Uh, most of my career has been spent in construction sales. Um, you might, I've talked with a bunch of you possibly in my role as switchgear. Um, and I guess about three and a half years ago or four years ago, I took over this position. I had previously sold Allen Bradley MCCs from the switchgear department, but took this on full time. And it's my pleasure to introduce you to Eric Zapka, who's our newest recruit and learning the ropes and coming up quick. Eric, go ahead. Yep. So the other end of the spectrum here, uh, like Chip said, I've been with Rumsey for two years and I was in inside sales. Um, for industrial and OEM customers for about a year and a half before I made the transition. And um, so, yes, definitely new to this role, but I am learning from the best, as some of you probably know. Uh, that includes Chip, Tony, Sean, and the rest of the AFG team as a whole. So that is the short history so far. Um, slide here. Okay, so as we mentioned, we're going to talk about <laughs> Centerline 2100 motor control centers and specifically what to look for um, when we're adding buckets to existing MCCs. And the way this is going to be structured, um, we're going to start off with some basic structural information and terminology, uh, just some real basic stuff. And then uh, we'll go into a brief overview of the offerings of unit types uh, from Rockwell. And then Chip will chime in uh, more towards the engineered options that are available. And throughout that, too, we'll add some precautions, um, things to watch out for, um, where to start, and things to keep in mind, uh, as well as other technology upgrades um, that are now available that weren't before. So the <clears throat> MCCs were really first invented. Um, to keep motor control components in a centralized location. And the goals there were just to keep personnel uh, safe from hazardous electrical parts, and then also to protect the components themselves uh, from harsh environments. And um, this also sim greatly simplifies installation and maintenance. Uh, you have all of your components and controls in one location. You know where they're at. Uh, they're properly labeled, hopefully and you can find things and interchange them as needed. Um, but yes, since they were first invented, we now have um, a lot of new features, and they're just overall a lot more safer, and uh, they have these smart devices uh, that allow you to access more information than ever um, remotely. One of the big advantages of Rockwell MCCs is their backward compatibility. Um, what that means is <clears throat> and 
if you have an MCC that was built in 1980 and you buy a bucket today, um, if all the NEMA ratings and everything are correct, you can plug it right into your existing MCC with no issues and vice versa. Um, and <clears throat> what this really does is it allows you to expand as needed, uh, replace existing buckets that have either failed or need upgrading, or you know, if you ordered a new MCC and somebody there was an oversight and you forgot a load, you can just say, oh, I need to buy an extra bucket and plug it in. Um, again, this just allows for a lot of flexibility, quick upgrades and replacements, uh, and also reduces the amount of spare parts that are needed uh, to be kept on the shelf. So here's a little diagram of what an actual uh, MCC section looks like. Uh, a standard section, which we'll probably focus on primarily in this presentation, standard section is 90 inches high, 20 inches wide, and 15 inches deep. Uh, there are short 71 inch tall uh, sections available, and there's also 20 inch deep sections available. Um, some of that depends on your requirements and where it's going and the equipment being installed, et cetera. Um, so <clears throat> when we refer to a space factor, that's really just kind of like a measurement tool that we use. Um, so a half a space factor is six and a half inches. And together in one vertical section, you're allowed six total space factors. Uh, so theoretically, you could have 12 half space factor units in um, one 90 inch section. Okay, so where do we start when you have the need to either get a new bucket or replace an existing one? Uh, the first thing uh, when you come to Rumsey that Chip and I will ask for is the serial number or catalog number from the MCC that's already installed. Uh, this can be found on the section nameplate, and <clears throat> it's going to be located on the vertical wireway door. Um, so there's basically a long, <laughs> continuous, narrow door uh, in be on the right of each section, and this nameplate should be attached to that section. Um, again, this gives you the serial number, some bus rating information, and uh, pretty much everything we need to get started. So what we'll do with that is we take that and we can actually request the original drawings from when the MCC was built from Rockwell, um, and that usually takes about a day or maybe two days to get from them, depending on how old it is. And um, with that, we can ensure that we get all the information that we need to make sure that it's a compatible bucket being put in. Um, and it's really the only accurate way to do that. So once we decide, you know, <clears throat> what bucket you're looking for uh, or what bucket you need, these are just some basic um, things that come with the actual unit. So it's the unit itself that has the components that make it up. Uh, it comes with a unit support pan, and you can see there on the bottom, it looks like a flat tray, and it locks into the MCC section and securely supports the unit. Uh, and it's also going to come with the door, uh, and that could be with or without pilot devices if they were selected. Um, one note here is that all, <clears throat> all plug-in units have an interlock feature, so they, can, they can't be inserted or removed when the disconnect is in the on position. That pretty much covers it for basics. Um, now we'll start going into some of the specific unit types that are available. This is just a, a broad snapshot of what is available. It's by no means everything, um, but they're definitely the most common that we see. Uh, you can think of it as <clears throat> pretty much any standard Rockwell automation product can be redesigned or wired to be put into an MCC unit. And <clears throat> the plan here is to just go through each of these um, topics. I'll start with the basic offerings, and then Chip will actually show us some specific example, customer examples, and kind of tips and tricks, tri tips and tricks, and things to things that you can do to make them more efficient for you. Thanks, Eric. Um, 
the plan is today that we'll show you eight or more types of buckets you can add to your existing MCCs. Uh, like Eric said, uh, he'll hit on some of the fast shipping, which is, you know, one to two week uh, shipment buckets and that we have in our portfolio. And I'll show you some engineered options we have provided in the past. Hopefully, we'll offer you some options on how you can upgrade your technology and your MCCs uh, that are existing. Go ahead, Eric. Okay, so the first group that we're going to look at are the NEMA combination starters. And um, just one common theme throughout this, if you see numbers in parentheses, I don't know if you can see the mouse pointer or not, but <clears throat> in this case, for the full voltage not reversing, fusible disconnect, and then in parentheses 2112, that's the MCC bulletin, uh, the beginning of the bulletin catalog string. And I just threw that in there as a quick identifier. Um, if you were to take a bucket out of your MCC, that's where you can easily see what exactly it is um, if needed or if you want to reference it in any documentation it's easy to look up. So the full voltage non-reversing starter, uh, they utilize the Allen Bradley 509 starter. Uh, there are vacuum starters available um, as an engineered option if they're needed. Um, they come in fusible disconnect or circuit breaker types and NEMA sizes one through six. And <clears throat> They are plug-in units all the way through size 5, and size 6 units are frame-mounted, and they actually need to be added as an entire new section, uh, which could be attached to the MCC. Um, also, these can be equipped with pilot de devices and aux contacts as needed and still be a standard ship product. Uh, pretty similar here for full-voltage reversing starters, uh, except they utilize the Allen Bradley 505 contactor. Uh, either fusible or disconnect, <coughs> uh, fusible disconnect or circuit breaker, and they come in sizes, NEMA sizes one through five. And they're plug in through size four, and size five is frame mounted in a new section. Again, also available with pilot devices or aux contacts as needed. A couple more starters here. We have <coughs> the full voltage lighting contactors. Uh, they use the 500L contactor, uh, either feasible or circuit break to disconnect, and the range, uh, the rated amperage range is 3 to 300 amps. And we also have two speed starter units, uh, one or two windings uh, in NEMA sizes 1 through 3, uh, again with feasible or circuit break to disconnects. And they use the Allen Bradley 520 starters. And now I think Chip has an example of what you can do when adding safety into your system. It didn't help if I took myself off mute. Okay, industrial safety solutions. What do we do? All right, safety and productivity of people, machines, and processes is a key element of any sustainable business. Studies show that best-in-class performers achieve higher overall equipment effectiveness, in addition, there is less unscheduled downtime and less than half the injury rate of average performers. Designated as the largest safety automation provider in the world, Rockwell and Rumsey will help you develop safer, more productive solutions. Uh, okay, I forget if you, you hit that slide to get rid of that red arrow there. Okay. We all know how to add safe torque off card to a drive, but what can we do for a starter? All right, go ahead, Eric. Next. Next slide. There you go. Okay. Um, in order to qualify as a safety circuit, we have to place two 100S safety contactors in front of the NEMA starter. While the safety contactors complete the safety circuit, the NEMA contactor with the E300 controls the circuit and provides diagnostics via Ethernet IP. All right. The Bolton 100S safety contactor provides mechanically linked, positively guided 
or mirror contact performance required in a feedback circuit of modern safety applications. They comes as SUVA, SUVA, third party certification, AC and DC operating coils, and really fancy gold plated auxiliary contacts. And I'm not even gonna attempt the name that they use here for the auxiliary contacts. Um, and what this does, this diagram shows us where we place those safety contacts. MS1 and MS2 are the safety 100S contactors. And you see that in front of the M contacts, which are the, the standard NEMA uh, contactor with the overload relay. In this case, I'm using an E300 with a current sensing module which will give us all our diagnostics and so forth and control back through Ethernet. Okay, Eric? Okay, thank you, Chip. So continuing with starters, uh, Rockwell offers what they call space-saving NEMA starters, and they do just that. They, um, I think the largest space factor unit is 1.5. Um, these are obviously geared towards smaller uh, NEMA size applications, um, but they do this by using the Bulletin 300 starter instead of the 509, like the one we talked about before. Um, so NEMA size one in the full voltage non-reversing. Um, uh, it's only it's the only size available for feasible disconnect units. Um, the circuit breaker units have a little bit of a wider range, and they go from NEMA size one through four. Uh, but again, they're all plug-in units and they don't go above one space factor. And for full voltage reversing, you have only NEMA 1 for fusible disconnect units, and then NEMA sizes 1 through 3 with circuit breaker units. Again, all plug in with horizontal handles on the doors. So you're moving it left to right instead of up and down. Uh, and these range from 1 point, uh, 0.5 to 1.5 space factors. Next, we have our dis, uh, feeder units, and these can be either fusible disconnects or circuit breakers. Fusible disconnects range from 30 amps to 1,200 amps. Uh, they're plug-in units uh, between 30 and 200 amps, and they're frame-mounted between 400 amps and 1,200 amps. Circuit breaker feeders offer a little larger of a range. Uh, they go between 15 amps and 2,500 amps trick. Um, thermal magnetic trips are available up to 250 amps, electronic trip only uh, for 300 amp and above. And <clears throat> frame 125 amp and 250 amp frame breakers uh, are plug-in units through 225 amps. And frame mounted units would be anything 400 amp, 3000 amp frame. And I think Chip now is going to show us <clears throat> um, adding an E300 overload relay and what it can do for you. Okay, how can we get the same info on a feeder bucket that we can pull out of a drive or a soft start, you might ask. And it's easy. Go ahead, next, Eric. Um, next slide. We can accomplish this by adding an E300 intelligent relay to the circuit. The E300 overload relay features intelligent motor control, offers modular solution with a wide current range and adjustable trip class, provide enhanced diagnostic information for single and three phase applications, includes integrated IO, offers simple wiring and easy integration into logics. By doing this, you can take your, what used to be a non-smart breaker and turn it into a smart circuit that you can monitor over uh, ethernet. Go ahead, next, Eric. And now we have our metering units, um, which can be added as standalone buckets. And I think in conjunction also with feeders, uh, which I think to might be talking about in a minute. Um, 
but for analog metering, um, we can put um, ammeters and voltmeters with or without switches, and they'll supply current transformers as needed. Uh, digital metering, uh, the unit consists of a power monitor 5000, which adds Ethernet IP, comes with a 30 amp disconnect, fuses, and also a control circuit transformer. Back to Chip. All righty. Uh, oh, lost my page. Okay, we can add a simple ammeter and in, on the incoming cables and a voltmeter on the load side of the main uh, for metering. Next, Eric. The ammeter shows you your amps phase to phase. Voltmeter shows volts phase to phase. Uh, now, notice when the factory wires the CTs, they use shorting blocks, and the PTs have their own uh, disconnects that we provide. Next, Eric. Then we get into our standard centerline MCC is the power meter, power monitor 5000. Go ahead next, Eric. There we go. The power monitor 5000 unit is the next generation of high end electric metering products from Rockwell. This family of meter provides advanced technology, new functionality, faster response and superior accuracy. The M5 model is the base version and provides an extensive range of metering functionality. The Power Monitor 5000 unit, co unit communicates power and energy parameters to controllers, HMI software, and applications such as Factory Talk Energy Matrix software over the Ethernet network and other optional networks. The Power Monitor 5000 unit works with controllers or software applications to address key applications, including load profiling, cost allocations, billing and sub-billing, power system monitoring control, demand management, demand response, power quality, power re reliability, and power quality analysis. The other thing that's pretty neat with this, if you have an existing Power Monitor 5000 model, I probably gave you the M5, the base model, unless we, we really drilled deep into it when we were ordering this, this guy. If you find that you want to add other options, like you see there, the M6, the harmonics, the oscilloscope, the event sync, or M8 that adds flicker, inner harmonics and transient detect. That's an easy upgrade to your existing M5. Um, I can go from an M5 to an M6, from an M5 to an M8, from an M6 to an M8. It's a simple firmware upgrade. Go ahead, next, Eric. We can also add a power monitor 500 to the main or feeder unit. The Power Monitor 500 features an on-device LCD display and a compact footprint, giving you instant visibility to your energy use. Features include compact size and panel mount, includes a built-in LCD display, allows you to record data centrally, and it's displayed it locally, measures voltage, current power, energy demand, and power factor. Includes multiple communication protocols, including Modbus RTU and Ethernet IP. Offers two digital relay outputs, which is optional. Offers two analog 4 to 20 milliamp outputs, optional, for available speed process control. Includes four configurable alarms, provides full integration with RSC Energy Metrics asset management software for complete energy management solution. And a lot of times I'll get the question whether I can add this to a feeder. 
Um, and the answer is yes, I can put this little power meter, which is a real nice little meter, you know, like five by five inch screen on the front of a bucket. I can use it on the main um, and you'll see when Rockwell does things, they do it right. It has the shorting blocks for the CTs. It has a disconnect for the, for the power transformer on there. And it's a nice little setup. Go ahead, Eric, next. So next we get into <clears throat> our lighting and power panel units. Um, so the lighting panels are frame mounted uh, available in main lug or circuit breaker, uh, and they're rated 100 amp or 225 amp with up to 42 branch circuits. And these accept one, two, or three pole bolt on uh, circuit breakers between 15 and 100 amps. And the power panels are plug in panels <clears throat> with a main circuit breaker only, and they're rated 100 amp, 150 amp, and 225 amp with up to 42 branch circuits. And the uh, same capabilities uh, for circuit branch circuit breakers. Next, we're going to talk about empty unit inserts. Um, these are really um, an option that can be included uh, to allow you to be prepared for field installed equipment. Uh, the first one is a full section blank mounting plate, <clears throat> and it um, like its name implies, it takes up the entire six space factor section. Uh, you can get them with or without disconnecting means, uh, and also with or without a horizontal bus. Um, there's also empty unit inserts that can be configured um, in the desired size. Uh, with their, you can do that in half space factor increments up to four space factors. I think it's the largest that they go. Um, these can also be um, equipped with or without disconnecting means, and they come with a unit support pan. Again, it's that flat pan where the unit rests on, and then also a door. And then we just mentioned the blank unit doors. Uh, all that these do are cover the unused unit space, and they also have a support pan. And I think Chip has a couple of examples of things that you can do with empty unit inserts. Thanks, Eric. All right, if you can see the drawing that I made on the left, on the left there, that drawing illustrates the full section um, empty insert that Eric was talking about. Now, the beauty of this thing is when I, when I build this, I can put horizontal bus behind there or leave it out, whatever you decide. If you need, naturally, if you need a disconnect and you need power in there, I'll need horizontal bus. But here's an idea. If you buy this cabinet and add it to your existing MCC, if you need a deep relay cabinet, this is a way to go or it's an option for you. Rather than putting, um, you know, the, the PLC Hoffman box on the wall, if you will, if you want to keep everything within the MCC, here's an option for you where you can have this full space factor up to 40 inches deep or 40 inches wide with a double door enclosure. Um, full section to mount your PLC, any controls you have. Um, say, for example, you want to turn your existing MCC, you want to make it intelligent. You want to put a PLC in there, you want to put power supplies, you want to put um, your Ethernet switches, you can come to Rumsey, we could set up with a managed switch and so forth, and everything you need to run your cabling uh, out to the, the buckets. The picture on the right um, illustrates real life. I had this one MCC. This is a picture that the factory took for me before they shipped out this MCC. And you see a bunch of different items in there. Um, and I'm primarily talking about section two. It starts with that little half space factor bucket on the top um, with a disconnect. Then the next one down below, you'll see that's an empty insert. Looks to be one and a half space factor, no disconnect. 
plenty of room in there to mount terminal blocks, a power supply, if you will. Um, and notice that from the one space factor on up, the empty insert bucket is actually shipped with that white uh, back plate that you can mount your devices on and then throw it into the bucket. Going down the line, you'll see a couple of half space factor empty insert buckets. Uh, those do not have a back plate, but there's plenty of room in there to mount whatever device you feel. You, you want to put a couple of relays in there, you want to put some terminal blocks, anything you want to do. Um, I think these things are a lot of times they aren't utilized till their full extent because people don't know that they can do that or add it in there. Um, if you go down to the last two buckets in the row, you'll see one looks like it has a disconnect and the one before or below it is a, uh, a control transformer or a power transformer. Looks to be probably about a, a two or three kVA unit. Um, one of the things that we can offer you is being able to get a different voltage. Say you have a small uh, 120, 208 volt panel that you want to put in the MCC or outside on the wall. You're out of space. You don't want to run conduit over to uh, another transformer. You could take it all out of the MCC there. Um, another neat little device, Eric, if you can hit next is this little interlock that we have, a door interlock. Where this is normally used is if you look at that picture there, what that actually is, is a half space factor um, disconnect feeding probably a larger transformer, you know, maybe a five to, five to 15 kVA uh, transformer there. What that little interlock does is until you open that door and in order to open up that disconnect door, the disconnect naturally has to be off or defeated. Um, it won't allow people to get into your controlled door without first opening the door of that controlling door that has the interlock on there. A lot of different applications. Say, for example, you want to put a place where people can go where there will be no voltage that you want to make sure the voltage is kicked off before they open up that door. There's a way for you to do it. All right, Eric. Okay, next we're going <clears> to <throat> move into soft starter units. Um, as with some of the other unit types, uh, you know, the sizes of these and the space factors that they occupy will vary uh, depending on the options that are selected and the amperage. Uh, you really have two options to choose from, uh, the SMC3 and the SMC Flex. Uh, the SMC3 uh, is an older model. Uh, it has three basic starting modes uh, and some basic system diagnostics as well. And the range is three amps to 135 amps. And the SMC Flex is a little bit more advanced uh, and it's newer and it has some a lot more actually operating features and starting modes, uh, some of which are listed up on the slide. Uh, you also get full metering and diagnostic capabilities, LCD display, keyboard programming, and a larger uh, amperage range, range, which is 5 amps to 480 amps. Uh, I think the key takeaway might be that you can get a lot more information from your devices with the Flex than you can with the SNC3. And SHIP has a couple more examples for these. All right, Eric, go ahead and click to the next one. The next following slides will show you some customer specific mods that we have been able to add to the soft starters in the past. Um, the point is that we can be very flexible to meet your requirements. In this uh, slide here, we're going to show you the addition of a three contactor bypass. Go ahead, next, Eric. All right, as you can see, I added an ISO contactor, an output contactor, and a bypass contactor with an overload 
in there to take that SMC offline if need be and run through the bypass. Next. All right, need to add some power factor correction caps? We can do that too. Um, go ahead and hit next, Eric. There they are. Go ahead, next. All right, as you can see, we added a contact or controlled 60 kV, kVAR uh, cap bank um, with the time delay relay in there. You always want to make sure that if you have a cap bank um, off the line side of a soft start, in order to have the soft start do its thing, start up, and then you want to bring those uh, power factor correction capacitors online. You never want to start an, a soft start with the capacitors in line. So you always, we always put a time delay relay in there. Um, you also notice in there that since the uh, the discharge capacitor has a zero in pins, we can put we in this one we put an eight loop coil, which is about a six inch coil to limit the inrush current when the caps are bought online. Um, Myron Zucker is one of our partners for the caps, and this shows the way that the caps are usually, they, you can buy these in a plate that's made for a, an Allen Bradley or Rockwell MCC. They can slide right in there. They're available you know, with blown fuse indication um, and without. In this case here for our 60 K bar, we had the, the, you can see we have blown fuse indication. We've got pilot lights, the whole deal. Uh, okay, Eric, next. Okay, all right. Some would say that we might have saved the best for last here with our drive units uh, and the same people that say that might be a little disappointed that we're not going to dive into too much detail uh, in, for, for surrounding selection. It's just a little bit too much to include on one slide. Um, but we just wanted to let you know uh, the specific models of drives that are available to be put into units and that they're obviously available with feasible disconnects or circuit breakers like many of the other units. Um, now they're also going to vary greatly in size depending on horsepower. Um, you know, the smaller ones are going to be your plug-in units, and then the larger horsepower drives will be frame-mounted in, in their own section. Um, and you can also get HIMS, uh, HOAs, communications, line and load reactors, um, among many other options as add-ons, and which I think Chip has an example of right now. All right, we can add line and load reactors or both as recommended or detailed uh, by the field conditions. Um, we offer both in 3% and 5% line reactors and load reactors, uh, along with DVDT filters. Go ahead, next, Eric. Go ahead, you can hit the next one. Um, in this case, our customers work with our drive specialist, Mr. Archer, on this application. The pump was located far enough away from the MCC to warrant the use of a DVDT filter. Go ahead, next, Eric. All right, now, why use Ethernet devices in your upgrade? Some of the easy reasons are Automatic device replacement, we call it ADC, replace units without reprogramming. Add-on profiles, AOP we call it, quicker integration into logics. Predictive alerts, reduce your downtime. Remote monitoring, energy power quality, all through these, a lot of these Ethernet devices that we talked about today so far. Go ahead, Eric. All right, let's take a minute to talk about the Ethernet power supplies. 
Um, go ahead, you can hit next, Eric. If you have attended any of our drive headquarters, uh, you probably have heard me talk about our redundant power supply. The nice thing with this redundant power supply is when I when I build this for your intelligent MCC, and the reason I'm telling you this is if you decide that you want to upgrade your existing MCC to something with more intelligence with Ethernet, this is really where we start. We look at the power supply. Rockwell in IntelliCenter uses this XLS power supply, which is, is their top of the line. I think it was 150% uh, percent of the rated load. And I always put a buffer module on the secondary side of a, of a power supply. That'll ride you out any, you know, short brownouts or bursts of power or whatever, and give you uh, clean power on the secondary of the uh, power supply. Then this redundant power supply, you'll see that we have uh, coming off the control circuit, um, off that CPT there, you'll see we have CB3 and CB2, all right? They're both wired to each one of their power supplies. A little tip and trick I tell people is when you get this bucket, if in the future you decide that you want a UPS to back up your control power, you can have an app outside UPS and run that 120 volt circuit into one of those circuit breakers, take it off the control transformer, run your separate control off your UPS into that breaker and power your second power supply. If you go down between the two power slots right below it, you'll see those uh, bank of diodes in there. They'll guarantee that power is not fed back between one power supply to the other. So you're protected there. Um, also in this slide, I show the ethernet connector out on the door. And this is a nice little device. It'll allow you to bring your laptop right up to the power supply bucket and plug in your ethernet, uh, your LAN cord, and plug in your laptop um, rather than running on battery power. Go ahead, Eric. All right. If all that sounds great to you, we do have a little program, a little bonus for being with us today. If you buy five or more buckets to modernize your facility, you receive a deep discount for tech upgrades. The discount rates improve based on total number of units from five up to 50 plus. Believe me, if you're 50 plus, we're gonna talk to you. Applies to all buckets upgrading to ethernet. Applies to all buckets upgrading from legacy overloads to the E300. Applies to all buckets upgrading from a full voltage non-reversing -re starter to a PowerFlex 520 or 750 drive. So if you have a project in mind and any of this sounds interesting to you, you know, get in touch with Eric or myself or your outside salesperson uh, to get us involved and we'll see how we can make that more plausible for you. And I think that's uh, about it for me. All right, hey Chip, real real quick question for you because I know this comes up on occasion. Um, you know, we can plug buckets in pretty much back to the beginning of the the center line twenty one hundred. How how far back realistically can you get uh, uh, drawings and information? Sean, that's a great question. It does come up. There's a lot of real old MCCs out there in the field. My personal experience is I'm pretty sure I can get drawings on existing MCCs from about 1985 on up. Um, before that, it, it gets pretty wishy-washy because things were kept on fiche. A lot of the fiche was uh, destroyed or in a flood or the records have been lost before that. But from, I would say, about 1985 on, on forward, we've got a pretty good shot at getting those drawings. Okay. And with that, if, if anybody on the 
the uh, webinar here has a question, feel free to unmute yourself or you're also welcome to chat it in and we'll make sure to, to answer it. Uh, if it's something we don't know, we can definitely get back to you, of course. Um, I think one of the big takeaways and some of the stuff that I think Chip had, had sort of cued in on on this is that um, really the Rockwell has a, a, a great motor control center group that can do a lot of custom things. So I think the one that that he had started out there uh, with from a safety standpoint uh, was one that came up because of a conversation with customers about having mixers um, and items where they required safety, but they were only across the line starter, you know, started uh, and they didn't want to invest in a drive, um, you know, especially when you get into NEMA 12 uh, or sealed up motor control centers, uh, getting rid of the heat becomes a bit of a challenge. And so people want to stick with soft starters or, or uh, uh, full voltage non-reversing. And so that's where some of those pieces came from um, just in the general conversation and, and trying to manage in some of the safety and other pieces. So the, the group can do a lot of custom items. So with that, any uh, questions? All right. Well, I do appreciate everybody taking the time to uh, to get on here today. Uh, we uh, th this happens to be the the last locked in series uh, presentation as we have them formally set out. However. Moving into the future, we will be doing some form of a, of a webinar every Tuesday moving into the foreseeable future. So uh, right now that information is all being worked on. We'll be getting that out to everybody. So hopefully you see some other topics uh, that are of interest to you. If you happen to have some topic that uh, you would like us to talk about, feel free to contact any one of us. Um, this presentation was around upgrading MCCs, kind of what you have and, and options that are out there. Uh, look forward to the future where we'll do a little bit more of an in-depth dive on the IntelliCenter, which is basically the motor control center coming from the factory with Ethernet completely uh, structured throughout it, along with all the data and, and items that, uh, that come together. So. Uh, with that, I appreciate everybody taking the time and uh, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you.